Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how you can block your EGR line in order to avoid the exhaust gas to get your intake dirty. This works on any diesel truck. Right now I'm working on a Mitsubishi L200, but you can do this in pretty much any truck with the method I'm going to show you right now. What I'm going to do effectively is to block the passage of exhaust gas recirculation to the intake manifold without touching the existing hardware that, that is on the engine. All the diesel engines that have an EGR have a similar system to this one. What most of them have is that uh, the exhaust gas comes outside the exhaust manifold before the turbo into a heat exchanger that cools the uh, exhaust gas with engine coolant. This is the heat exchanger I'm talking about. Exhaust gas, hot one, comes in here and goes out here and uh, it gets cooled with the engine coolant before going into the intake manifold. The exhaust gas that goes into the intake manifold is controlled by this electronic valve. We're not gonna change any of that. You can delete it if you want, uh, and you can just unplug this, but all of that can cause a check engine light, and I find that the best and easiest way to do it is just to put a blocking flange between the uh, connections. In a nutshell, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna remove this so I can access the gasket that goes between this tube and the heat exchanger, and I'm gonna replicate that uh, gasket as a flange without the hole in the middle so it can block the passage of exhaust gas. This is the flange that I'm talking about. I bought this one because it was a specific kit for this truck. You can uh, use the existing gasket to recreate or fabricate the same flange for each application or engine that you are uh, working on. I'm gonna remove the exhaust gas recirculation valve. I'm gonna disconnect it and remove it just to uh, not damage it when I take apart all of the rest of the things. This is what the EGR valve looks like. The EGR valve is right here. It's controlled by the sensor solenoid. It just opens and closes the passage of exhaust gas recirculation into the intake manifold. This gasket goes right here. And this is the gasket that we are gonna copy. This gasket goes right here. What you need to do is that literally you just need to take this gasket and uh, replicate it without the hole in the middle in a flange of a little uh, thicker steel. This is the part that I already have. You can uh, fabricate it very easily actually. We're gonna place it in the middle and that way that's gonna block all the soot for going into the intake manifold. Now that the flange is already obstructing the pass of the exhaust gas, I also applied some high temperature RTV, so it seals the boosted part of the uh, EGR, and the rest of the steps is just to reassemble everything as it was. Put a little bit of Loctite on everything, and uh, I'm sorry if you cannot get uh, very good footage, but these Japanese engines are a nightmare to work on. They are okay to work on with, but uh, it's a nightmare to try to film what you're doing. So I finished assembling everything. I'm gonna leave it a couple of hours for the silicone to cure on the lower side. And then we are gonna go for a test drive. While the silicone is curing, I decided to take a minute to show you the effects on this truck of the exhaust gas recirculation valve after only 10,000 miles. This truck has a little bit over 10,000 miles. And when I removed the valve, I just could see the freaking mess it has in the inside. Funny enough, the, this uh, diesel truck has a throttle body. Everything is clean up here. And rear, you can see uh, back there all the exhaust gas recirculation, all the carbon buildup that it's uh, forming on the intake manifold. That's what we wanted to uh, eliminate. And as you can see, as I said, this truck has a little bit over 10,000 miles and it has a freaking mess back there. We are back from the test drive and everything seems to be running perfectly. Everything seems to be in perfect working conditions and there is no leaks. So that's it for today's video on how to block the EGR on any diesel truck. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you like what you see in my channel, please subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.